Gather round. Come here, tale of trickery and wit. There was once a witch who lived in a tiny hut at the edge of a swamp. She was skilled in the healing arts and could cure nearly any ailment. Though she had many visitors, her truest companions were a cluster of spiders living under her table. One day, a man ambled up the path and knocked upon her door. You must be the wise witch Flera, curer of all ills. He looked around the hut with a sneer. People cross the world for your cures, and yet you live in this terrible shack. Surely folks pay dearly for the chance to continue breathing. But Flara was not one for glowstones, and she quite liked her home. She only stiffened and asked what his ailment was. So, he told her of the terrible pains and aches he suffered. Horrible scratching in his toenails, in each strand of hair, and in his tear ducts. Ah, it was a torture like none other. But he'd heard of the cure, only to be found in the swamp near her home. The only way to ease his pain? The heart root. Well, in all her years of saving lives, Flora had never heard of such a route. But the Borg wasn't so treacherous, and she had gone in many times for lesser cures. So, she agreed to find the heart route, and the man agreed to wait in her hut. Flora trudged through the swamp, thick with slime and the stinking air heavy with rot. When she came to a clearing of black clay, she thrust her hands into the wet muck, but alas, nothing. She dug for hours, her back aching and fingernails packed with mud. Finally, just as twilight fell to darkness, she found it. A spiraled green tuba, pulsing and glowing like a star. She lifted the root, heavy with swamp water, and slid it into her bag. Not a moment later, something rustled in the shadows. A tiny silhouette showed itself beside her. You have stolen from me. That root is not yours to take. It hissed. The witch could just make out the sight of a moss elf, staring up at her in fury. She told him of the ailing man and the power of the strange root. But the moss elf only grew more angry and stamped his feet in the swampy muck. It's a root of poison and destruction! He screeched. It cannot heal anything! I curse you! I curse you to remain in this bog forever! And he snatched the root from her bag before darting back into the night. Flora's path melted away, replaced by a ring of identical tree trunks, branches crisscrossing, weaving a cage around her. Roots churned under her feet, and a bone-chilling mist draped itself over the bog. Flora sat down on a tree trunk and got to thinking, wondering about the man who had sent her in hunt of the root. Had he known the truth? Had he wanted to use it for evil? No way to tell. So she set to trying to remember if anyone had ever broken a moss elf curse. Just then, she felt a tickling down her arm and her leg. She fought the urge to swipe and, if it wasn't her own spiders, they brought terrible news. The supposedly ailing man had taken over Flara's hut, demanding riches and luxuries from the ill in exchange for false medicines. He'd thrown out her furniture and dumped the spiders into the rain, threatening to stomp them if they snuck back in. Now, it is often forgotten that spiders know an awful lot about a lot of things. With so many eyes and a knack for spinning tails, it's a natural skill. They knew exactly how to break a moss elf curse and set to spinning huge lacy webs, making a cocoon of the forest. They hummed softly, and when Flara cut through the silk, she was at the edge of the bog, her hut just up ahead. 
Laborers surrounded her home, painting and scraping, her precious herbs crushed beneath their feet. She peered through the window, and there was the man sitting upon a throne, and beside him a large pile of jewels and glowstones. Flara burst through the door, and he jumped halfway to the sun. You've taken too much! There are hundreds of jewels before me, and not a one do you deserve! You haven't enough hands to even carry these riches, you snake! Now the spiders thought this was quite a funny idea, so they hummed again, and the man sprouted hundreds of hands, and his body grew long and snake-like. He shrunk smaller and smaller before slinking under the door and out into the bog. And so, you've now heard the tale of how centipedes came to be.